Very Rhonda-esque. Look, she's not wrong, even though it's a bit arrogant, but that's the style I think that people have appreciated about Rhonda. It's not necessarily something I appreciate about Rhonda, but when you talk about her legacy, this, this does sum it up in one quote, really. You know, it's, it's that she knows she has value and interest, but she also doesn't really give a shit what anybody else wants to hear. You know, she's not entirely open book. She's not there entirely, you know, for the fans selflessly. Like Rhonda has always been about Rhonda. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, she's, she's continuing to be exactly how she's always been. Again, like I said, not wrong, but I also think when I when I listen to this, she almost sounds emotional. I don't think she's entirely happy with her no legacy. Yeah. The point that Rhonda makes about us not deserving to hear it right. and about the vulnerability, you know, I think that it it speaks again to the point that she left the sport worse than she entered it and that she has that inflated ego. She does have all of those things. You know, and I talk about myself and we're the polar opposites. It's why we never really got along. I started my career off with a loss. You know, I started with the humble approach. So I'm very open book. Like, I have you, nothing Misa, to hide. You started you start with getting your face broken. Yeah, like I have you, nothing to yeah, hide. Like right. I, I win some, I've lost some. I just, you know, I don't have, I don't have the need to like put myself on a pedestal or not be open book. Like I, I enjoy being transparent because I hope that somebody can take something away from you know my gains and my losses and I, I you know I've I've lost horribly in front of the entire world and so did Rhonda but she has a chance here to open up and to to give you know to give some insight and perspective and motivation but she's obviously not at that point where she feels good enough about her own legacy to be vulnerable and to reflect and give you know give back so she's obviously just not in a good place with it that that's what my takeaway when I see this is that she she's not prepared to be vulnerable in front of us she wants to be the hard ronda rousey the one that was back in 2014 that you know i always said winning is easy you don't have to make any adjustments you don't have to make any changes you're on the top of the world you're doing great when you lose that's when you see what you're really made of all right i'm drinking saturday night folks i am going to get a buzz on for this main event. Ally Quinta minus 135. Donald Cowboy Cerrone plus 105. Kenny will need your main event selection. Aya Quinta has won six of his last seven. He is the favorite against Donald Cerrone, who is really trying to make one more lightweight run here. And I think his son is a huge motivator and something that has really helped him in terms of the discipline. Uh, the win over Alexander Hernandez by stoppage in January, he was the betting underdog, I believe. Really a huge step towards lightweight contention because it puts Cerrone right back in the mix, got him a number eight next to his name at lightweight. Now he gets the number four guy in the world in his 31st UFC appearance. Cerrone plus 105, Aya Quinta minus 135. Which way you go? Listen, a lot of how we were talking about Jack Hermanson and, and the difference in hunger between him and Jacare Souza. When you're a hungry fighter, that really is the jet fuel uh, behind what you can do in the UFC. And I think, um, you know, Donald Cerrone certainly has picked it up. I, I think he is um, very motivated going back down at 155 pounds. I think he has a lot of skills. I think he uh, is dangerous both on the feet and on the ground. However, he's facing another very hungry guy in Ally Quinta. And I also love the way that Ally Quinta matches up against Donald Cerrone. You got to be a very good boxer who can pressure fighters, who can be tough, who's not afraid to be in the pocket. That's how you beat a Donald Cerrone, by being in the pocket and getting right in front of him and backing him up repeatedly, all the while being able to stop those takedown attempts. I think Ally Quinta is that guy. Um, I don't think he gets it done by knockout. I'm going to go with Al Iaquinta by decision and proving you wrong that I always pick against Ray Longo's guys, John Adam. I love, Get it. Out I of love here. it. I'm going to text him right after the show and say, hey, just so you know, Ken Flo picked Al. Oh. And he'll be happy to oh. know that Jared better. did better. as well. We have Cub. Yes. Hey, buddy, you're talking to Matt, Sarah, and Jim Norton. How you doing? What's up, Cub? How's it going, guys? Oh, man. We're doing okay. Uh, we were saying before the fight, too. I mean, you know you're fighting. Uh, you know, Shane Burgos is really tough. He's only got one loss. But you, you know, a guy like yourself who, who's a veteran and, and has seen every... There's nothing the guy's going to throw at you that you haven't seen before. Um, so how, how are you mentally doing right now? You've had a, a couple losses in a row. And how is your mentality and how is it affecting you? Um, 
which part the, the losses yes like does it start to play on you where you start to doubt yourself or how, how do you handle that uh you just have to make sure you're you're looking at each fight individually first of all um because it's not like it's not like a, a mentality thing you know it's like i'm facing the top guys um right. you know and and i'm didn't get the wins in the last three so that's about as much of a streak as it is um but I, I changed some things going into this camp that I wanted to change in the last fight. And, you know, that, that was most of the preparation. Trying to be a little bit faster than uh, working more than power. And then uh, uh, I did try to focus on having some time to myself since I have little kids running around now. So I, I spent half the time um, at my house in Indio and half the time in Orange County. And you were and you were training, I guess, alongside TJ. And when something like that happens, how, how does it affect the team or the gym in, in general? When 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 there's such a high profile guy, uh, you know, is out for two years. What, what's the mentality of of, of the uh, of the gym or of you guys? You know, do you talk about I it? Mean, do you sit down? Was, was pretty pretty shocked. Um, I think people were trying to portray the the fact that. Mm, it was something we were all in on, and it, and it wasn't. Uh, everybody was very surprised, um, and then we just kind of moved on from it. Uh, TJ, uh, you know, he he takes off for a long time in between uh, his fights. Um, you know, when he was the champ, they had him doing all kinds of stuff, and then go on vacation and all that. So uh, it's not like he was around a, a lot at that time. And then um, I had been training a little bit. Um, more on my own and and doing smaller sessions to, to really get the most out of it so um, other than the initial shock of it, it it didn't really play too much a role into into my camp or with the rest of the team and I'm, I'm looking over your fights I mean you literally have fought everyone the, the absolute best you fought all of them <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's why I got to fight these new up and comers, you know. And you know, people don't really want to see the rematches and stuff like that. So, um, if it's not a top guy, then then let's see what these young guys are made of. Right, and the young guys coming up, like in the light heavyweight division, Johnny Walker is a guy that even higher ranked guys will fight because he's yeah. an exciting young fighter. And who, uh, Zabit uh, Magomedsharipov, a lot of guys will fight him because he's just such an exciting fighter. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of how it is with Burgos. Even though he, you're, you're higher than him, it's still an exciting fight to watch. And this, it's not a disadvantage for you to fight him. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw him and there's a couple other guys that right when they came on scene, I was like, damn, okay, this, this I like this kid's heart. You know, he's got some skills. Uh, um, hopefully I'll, I'll fight him down the road. And, you know, here we are. Well, doesn't it excite you? I mean, listen, prior to this... Um you know, a couple of tough fights we've had. I mean, again, with Frank Yeager, Brian Ortega, all, again, the top of the top. I mean, you were on a four-fight winning streak before we hit a little bit of a slid. And like I was just talking earlier with Derek Brunson, every every fight is, is a new chance of just putting yourself right back in the mix. This By you fighting this young kid who only has one loss, like Jimmy likes to say, you know, you'll take all his smoke, man. You're right back in the mix, Cub. <laughs> right? Does it does it does it gas I mean, you up? Like the fact that you're fighting a kid with some smoke? Of course. I mean, I think you you look at um um Anthony uh, Anthony Pettis. Yes. I mean, yes. People were writing him off for for a while now, you know. And and that last win just Huge. put him on the map, you know. Uh and like, whoa, okay, multi divisions, you know, he can do whatever he wants. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking to, to to go just have a great performance, and and that's kind of what I have to narrow it down to. I'm not thinking about title fights or sure. thinking about who's next. I I have I have this fight in front of me, and I have to go out there and do work, and that's that's all that's on my mind. And and everybody loves Frankie Edgar. I mean, I, I don't think there's a fighter we've ever talked to who doesn't respect him. He's kind of uh, lobbying to be the next one to fight uh, Max. What do you think? I, I would love to see him get that shot, especially after. Max was unable, and then he fought Ortega, and kind of, you know, it took a huge shot, and then Ortega got the shot after that. So how do you feel about that, Frankie, getting the next shot at uh, Max Holloway? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people thought that that was 
it's going to be a tough fight for uh, Max. You know, Frankie Style, maybe that's the kind of guy that, that can beat him. Um, a guy that can, you know, close the gap, take him down, beat him up on the ground. So, um, you know, nobody's really taken Max down in a very long time. So I think that uh, I, I think that, that is a good fight to make. Uh, I think there is some other guys that are the Volkanovski. Um, uh, who else is there? Um, trying to think of the guy's name. There, there's some top guys coming up that you know have a shot. But if we had to say right now, I'd have to say Frankie. Paulie Malinaji. Uh, this new one is him attacking the MMA community and saying that he wants to put Artem Wobov in a in a coma. In a so effing coma. In an effing coma. The main thing, if you break it down, is him talking about MMA fans saying how MMA is superior to boxing because it's tougher, it's more dangerous and stuff like that. No. So his argument is obviously there's more deaths in boxing. It's more dangerous because you're in the people's head more often. But then MMA guys are like, but you're wearing these big padded gloves, right? So he's talking smack on them. So this is this is MMA fans who've never fought defending the sport of MMA against a world-class boxer. Um... But it's not like Polly knows a ton about MMA, but he does have his fucking doctorate in boxing. So the, he put, when you when your piece of shit community, uh, in a, the MMA community, it's not a piece of shit. It's just toxic. It's just very dark. Like negativity is 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 what MMA. I they just thrive off of it. I don't. There's no other sport like it. It's true. They just love negative shit. I don't know. That's what it is, man. Uh, so you put when you're piece of shit comedian, you're piece of shit people talk about we fight with pads and how your sport you're in a dangerous sport like MMA when nothing of the sort happens to which you is why you have a circus of fan base because it's like wrestling. Then the day, no matter what happens to you guys, uh, tapping assures you you're gonna see the next the that guy next week. Tapping assures you you're gonna see that guy in a few months. In boxing, you don't have those assurances. So there's a respect level even to to the trash talk that we have. Uh, and it's being surpassed now. It's being overcome with this garbage that we have from this other community, MMA. For me, I think the way you solve it, seeing one of their own in a coma, seeing one of their own in a fucking coffin, then you say, you know what? This shit is no joke. Um, there's some truth to what Polly's saying. There's no... There's no other culture like the MMA culture as far as negativity. Um, and I don't, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just a generational thing. If it's because it was started online, I I don't know. Uh, you know, if one guy loses a fight, he's the worst fighter in the world. Uh, if one guy gets hit with the right hand, he's awful at striking. It's just very bipolar. It's very toxic. Um, boxing, uh, MMA is not more hardcore than boxing. Um, boxing is also a sport where you have to. With heavyweight, there's a little exception. There's a little wiggle room, but you have to have years and years and years and years and years of an experience and hardships to get to a level where you're going to even start to make money. In MMA, because it's a newer sport, you could be professional in a day. You know, it's there's, it's just a different playing field. So um, put on, for anyone who's never fought, Put on an eight ounce boxing glove and tell me how much padding you have. It's, it's, there's nothing there. It's just to protect the fighters from basically breaking their fucking hands. There's not much there. Put, watch the glove that fucking Deontay Wilder puts on and that Joshua put on. And you're like, oh shit, these are not padding. This is not, it's not what you think it is. Those are clubs and they're secured with a hand wrap that's basically could punch through cement to break people's faces and jaws. It is not a thing of really of glory or to soften the blows. It as a matter of fact, it makes it worse. Um, uh, but I've also never understood the MMA versus boxing debate. I don't, you can like both. I don't understand it. I mean, Paulie's making it MMA versus boxing. I get it because he's getting so much shit from the MMA community because of what happened with Connor. That's why this is happening. Um, the debate doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't have to like one or hate the other. It's no different. Do you like football? Yeah. Do you like baseball? Yeah. Cool, man. Which one's tougher? I don't know. But if you're watching at a high level, they're all really fucking good, man. They're all really, really good. 
But the, again, with the MMA community, it's, it's coming from people who have never competed in their lives, the keyboard warriors, arguing with a guy who's a world champion boxer. Doesn't make sense. He made a, a point that I thought was a good point too. So if in MMA, there's ways out, and in boxing, the only way out is to either get knocked out or you have to literally quit and you can't live that down if you don't get, get off your stool. Yeah, so in boxing, so you're gonna take a much bigger hit in your career if you look for an easy way out. So let's say you get hit with a body shot and you stay down. If the crowd can tell, you just kind of bitched your way out of it and stayed down. Your career's pretty fucked. In MMA, if I want a way out, and we've seen it happen with multiple guys and very famous fighters, they get caught in a rear naked choke, they just don't feel like being in, they tap. We're like, all right, cool, we'll see them next week. Yeah. It's it's very, very different when it comes to that. Um, you're not gonna see a guy in boxing fight the way cowboys in three weeks, you know, or have a fight three weeks ago and then turn around and fight right away in a big fight. It just doesn't work that way in boxing. Nor can you, you know, with, with the, strip, the head trauma. Um, Polly has a point there. There's yeah. easier, there's easier outs in MMA, but there's also way more, way more ways to lose in MMA than there are boxing. Mm. All right. Again, no one wins in this debate. It's a, it, I don't know why it's a boxing versus MMA thing. No one wins. In the beginning, I it's remember It's like why. strawberry versus vanilla ice cream. They're both great. You, yeah, why yeah. choose? I don't. People take it so personal. You don't own MMA. You don't own boxing. Why would you argue for this? If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.